Okay, I'd just like to take you through the formula for critical angle and uh, how it's derived and then how to apply it. So um, we'll take uh, you know a simple example of light refracting out from glass or something like that into air. So you should know that when light travels from glass to air it speeds up and refracts away from the normal. This I'll call the angle of incidence and this I'll call the angle of refraction. Now if you keep increasing the angle of incidence you should know that eventually the angle of refraction is going to be 90 degrees and we're going to get to the stage where our refracted ray is just refracting along the surface of uh, the glass. So this angle here, the angle of incidence, where the angle of reflection, the angle of re reflection, my apologies, the angle of incidence when the angle of refraction is 90 degrees, this is called the critical angle C. And what's happening here is that below this angle, some of the light is also being reflected inside uh, the glass. So some of the light refracts out and some of it reflects in. Here, where there's a ray just refracting along the surface, we're getting lots of light reflecting back in. And beyond this critical angle, any angle beyond this critical angle, all of the light will reflect back in and none of it will refract out. So beyond this angle, total internal reflection occurs. But what we're interested in here is finding a formula for the critical angle. Now, that's going to depend on the refractive index of the incident medium, the medium you're coming from, and the refractive index of the medium you're going to. So if you're going from glass to air, Ni is the angle of in um, Ni is the refractive index of the glass, Nr is the refractive index of the air. So what's the formula for Snell's law that we've been through for this? The formula is Ni sine I equals nr sine r. This is the formula for Snell's law. Um, and now we're going to put some things into this. Now, if we're trying to find the critical angle, then our i, our angle of incidence, well, let's call that c, the critical angle. Okay. Um, our r, when we're at the critical angle, our r is 90 degrees. So into here we're going to put 90 degrees for the angle of refraction. Now on your syllabus you're always going into air and the refractive index of air is 1. Obviously in the real world you can have total internal reflection you know between any two media as long as you're going from the the more dense one to the less dense one but for the purposes of the AQA GCSE syllabus um, you're only ever going to deal with going from a material to air so that's always going to be one so if we now write this out again n i sine c equals sine 90 degrees now if you put that into your calculator You'll find, and you're in the right mode, if your calculator is in the right mode, you'll find that sine of 90 degrees is 1. Um, if we drop this little i now um, and just call n the refractive index of the medium we're travelling from, uh, then this becomes n sine c equals 1. Um, which may or may not be the formula you see on the formula sheet. I think the formula you see on the formula sheet will be sine c equals 1 over n. So this is the formula for the critical angle. And if you want to find out the critical angle, if we know that sine c is 1 over n, then c is the inverse sine of 1 over n. Now this bit here isn't actually on the formula sheet. This one here is not on the formula sheet but you need to be able to do it so the previous formula the one above is on the formula sheet but this one here to actually get the critical angle to do the inverse sign is not on the formula sheet so uh, it's, it's very straightforward basically to apply this is very very straightforward 
Um, so let's take the example where we've got um, the refractive index of the glass is 1.42 or something like that. That's a sensible refractive index. What would be the critical angle going from that glass to air? So if you've got glass, if you've got light going from this glass to air, what's the critical angle going to be? Well, it's simply the inverse sine of 1 over n which is the inverse sine of 1 over 1.42. Now I'm just going to pause the video and load up my calculator. Um, so while I'm doing that, why don't you pause the video and work out what it is, and then we'll see if we agree. Okay, I've just loaded up my calculator. Now I'm just going to check it's in the right mode. If I do sine of 90, it should give me 1. Good, I'm in degrees mode. That's great. So now I'm going to do inverse sine, shift sine of 1 divided by 1.42 equals 44.7 degrees, 44.8 degrees we'll call it. Whoops, 8 degrees. That's the critical angle. So if we go back up now, if my angle of incidence is less than 44.8 degrees, then some of the light is going to refract out and some of it is going to reflect back into the glass. If it's exactly equal to that angle, then just a tiny, tiny bit of light is going to refract along the surface and the rest is all going to reflect inside. Any angle of incidence greater than this angle, 44.8 degrees, and all of the light will reflect internally. So, what I'd like you to do is just a quick check that you're happy with that. So, on this screen here, I've got uh, four different media, water, glass, ruby and diamond. We've got light that's inside each of these media um, that's being directed at the boundary between those media and air. So all of these are air going into air. So for all of them you can just use that simple formula that was on the other page. So what I would do is pause the video um, and then calculate the critical angle for each of these. So copy the table out, calculate the critical angle for each of these, and then I'll reveal them in just a second. So pause the video now. Great, hopefully you've paused it and uh, done the calculations. Now, I've got, got Excel to work these out for me, but I'm pretty sure they're right. So if I just reveal them now, these should be the critical angles uh, that you calculated. And you'll notice that the greater the refractive index, the smaller the crit critical angle. That means that easier it is for total internal reflection to happen. So total internal reflection can happen at much smaller angles in diamond than it can in water. Um, and that gives diamond some of its um, sparkly, shiny appearance and makes it look, um, look different to other stones which don't have such a high refractive index. So hopefully that's a good introduction to, to the, the critical angle formula. It's a very straightforward formula. As long as your calculator is in the right mode, um, you should be fine. Remember, the only bit that isn't on the formula sheet is this final bit in the green box here, down here. So this bit is not on the formula sheet, so you need to be able to do that yourself. Um, but hopefully, that uh, should get you going with your critical angle calculations.